right here talking about how we, we always like to be different. And so Anthony and I are going to be a little bit different um, because we're both going to talk we're going to try to have this feel more conversation like and we're not we don't feel the need to be in the front and we don't feel the need for y'all to stare at us interesting still be some interesting things yeah exactly <laughs> but truly to be, to be honest because we've embarked upon this new venture what we hope to gain is some insights and information from you. And I'm and I on behalf of all of us, I'd just like to thank Pat for what mm -hmm. she's done to have this. Yeah. And, and the fact that she set the tone last night with let's talk. And how many times do we go to a conference? And I feel like I've talked to over three quarters of you already. And that just doesn't happen sometimes when you go places. So you've done a wonderful job, and thank you. And so hopefully this this will be a little bit um, more of that. And you've seen the the introduction. And I so I so want to uh, make the lighting up there a little better, like I guess all the time. Um, I remember when teaching was... That darn was sun in Florida. That darn sun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a, this is a classroom. You know, clearly with a chalkboard in the front, and but I do want to open a pack. Need a fun life. It makes us grow. We were actually very worried about being at this time after lunch, because I, you know, I I don't do caffeine, and I just did some tea just to make sure I could keep <laughs> So, you know, how many of you remember these days, and I so want to, you know, I so want to be able to say at some point, remember when the classroom was a chalkboard in the front? Now, just in light of keeping us all awake, will all of you who still have classrooms with chalkboards in them, please stand. Please stand. Yes, we do too. We still have chalkboards in the classroom. We actually put them into our new science building. Right. And you have some faculty that say, please leave this here. So yeah. And so, and so I, I find myself wondering, second question is, do we really believe it will ever go away? And so just show me, how many of you think in one to two years, maybe one to two years, we really won't see, we'll have renovated so much we won't see that. Anybody believe one to two years we won't see it anymore? Anybody believe in about five years we just won't see it anymore? Anybody believe uh, maybe ten years from now we just won't see it anymore? I mean, the fact is, you know, while I'd love to be one of those people who could say, wow, those days are gone, right? We're moving forward with technology. Because I am one of those people who I just, I shouldn't, but I love technology for the sake of technology. It's just fun, you know, it's just fun. Um, but, um, we all accept the fact that maybe this is still the standard somewhat, but things are changing and what we support is changing. We're not supporting trying to help them find the dustless chalk and how exciting that was. Yes, dustless chalk. <laughs> oh, oh, I got the box of colored chalk. Remember those days. Um, but you see Mr. Need is driving the change bus, you know. <laughs> Need does drive change. And, and you know, I, don't know, I don't know how long a lot of you have been around, but I was around pre-LMS stage. And I remember, I remember seeing all these little pockets of things that were happening. Somebody was trying to get a discussion board there. Somebody was going to a different site to get a chat. And they wanted to keep a calendar, and they wanted to take assignments, and they wanted to share content, and we had webs. And everybody was creating their own website, You trying to learn HTML to be able to create. And all these things were happening, and then all of a sudden, LMS enters the scene, and it was like the savior. Woo! We have an avenue to try to make this, you know, go forward in some sort of an organized fashion to handle a big variety of things that were going on. And... And, and we all know that some people really never did convert into the LMS, right? They created those sites and they're still using them, right? Okay, so we know that will happen too. But what had, has been going on 
you know, on our campus is a huge variety of things um, using communication in a variety of ways. And so um, last year, in the, the bottom item there in our IT advisory committee, we started talking about how our and I'm going to focus mainly on our faculty here. There, these things are happening in other facets of the, of the campus, but I'm talking about the faculty. You know, they're doing interviewing, they're having guest speakers come in, and some are using Skype, and some are using hand out, Hangouts, and some are using, you know, WebEx, and all these different things are going on, and then all of a sudden there's this HD video conferencing opportunity, and we don't have the ability to to be a part of that, you know, all these things are happening, and so we start these IT committee discussions because um, our IT committee has evolved into a driving force because it has faculty who talk to faculty, who have connections with the provost, you know, who have connections with IT, and, and we try to have it be a really wonderful collaborative group, and, you know, clearly there was a need for some sort of change to improve those kinds of experiences because quite frankly um, many of the setups that we had didn't make for those kinds of experiences to be fun or comfortable or nice or anything in that vein. And yes, you know, need does drive change. Now, that picture is actually um, a room that was on our campus. Can anybody see anything wrong? with the room? Do you, do you see some problems? Can you, can you find, where's Waldo? Where are the problems? Can you, can you find some of the problems in the room? Do you see the broken seat in the front of the room? Do you see the broken seat? Um, the, room would, the room had been just completely shut down because it was a liability, a potential life, you know, hazard for a lot of reasons. And yes, those are wires just hanging out of the ceiling where a projector once was, right? So. You know, there were a lot of, it was almost, you know, symbiotic. They're all kind of, hmm, you know, things are happening and making, you know, things come along. And so um, the way we start things uh, on our campus that deal with um, technology changes is we ask the interested party to submit a technology proposal. And this is where I'll let Anthony take over um, for a while. Um, because it started with um, pushing to have a technology proposal in place so we could evolve something with all these needs that were happening. Yeah, so on our campus, obviously there were changes going on in, in addition to what Jan is talking about, and, and our budgeting process was part of that. So we were developing a technology proposal system for faculty to submit uh, requests and that sort of thing. So. We were in the process of working with the IT Advisory Committee, which Jan had already mentioned earlier, and we were getting uh, information from several different places around campus. And this particular project was, was sort of unique in that it was being driven by uh, needs uh, in, from various places on campus. There was not a faculty person or a group of faculty who were asking specifically for technology. However, we were hearing the rumblings throughout the campus and, and, and certain things, and, and obviously based on the uh, uh, things that we were being asked to do, uh, as Jen mentioned in the previous slide, the, all the Skype opportunities, uh, and the, the, the faculty member who had been injured and who wanted to continue to teach uh, from home while he was recovering. So we, we were hearing all these different things, and, and it's what we heard here is we felt like we were behind. Uh, many of you have been doing this for a long time, yet we didn't have the infrastructure in place to be able to do this. So uh, through the technology proposal process, we didn't get anything from the faculty. So IT wrote up something. We said, well, we need to have this and it needs to get in the process. So we wrote up something. Jan wrote up the initial process and it came to our staff and we, we massaged it a little bit more and, and we presented it to the budget process. And interestingly enough, uh, our president and the provost were meeting with these different ACS groups. And they were hearing what's going on on other campuses. And suddenly, it became important. And uh, there were suddenly dollars available to us to do this. So uh, we ended up getting a budget for this and a short timeline to move forward. 
And uh, so, it, again, this was not new technology, but it was new for us. So the process that we were going through to figure it out then became elevated and, uh, I guess, accelerated through, through uh, the, the months ahead. As we began to look at the process, we thought, well, all these things that we're being asked to do are, uh, require different vendors, different technologies, different standards, and that sort of thing. So we knew immediately that no one vendor could do everything that, that we needed to do. So we, we began looking at industry standards, of course, and, and, and uh, looking to combine the technologies to accommodate a big enough variety because we, we felt like we were going to get one shot at this, and it was a pilot. People were going to look at it and think, well, either this is going to work or it's not. So we had to sort of throw our resources into it to make sure that we did a good job of it. And uh, I'm happy to say that, that we have done a good job and because of the excitement that it's generating on campus. So uh, that's sort of where the design considerations came from. It was, it was backwards. This was an IP presented project. And now that the faculty are seeing it be successful and, and sort of the energies that are going around with it, they're asking us about it, so we'll see here in you know, a few moments about what it is. So anyway, the, the room layout was a, a completely different way of doing things, and you'll see that there's two screens there. And one of the things that we have is, is a Mondo pad. Is, is anyone familiar with a Mondo? Do you have a Mondo pad? Two of you? Okay, great. Have you used it? We just started the semester using it. It's great. I love the Mondo pad. Oh, yeah. How about you? We demoed it. Uh, Ironically, during finals, and they had a bunch of apps on there. Angry Birds was the most popular one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we loved it. We loved it. So, well, what we were thinking about is replacing the computer in the classroom with a Mondo pad. I mean, it is a computer, obviously, but changing the way of doing things a little bit. And uh, obviously, with apps and the touch screen and the idea of uh, making it simpler to use was what came to mind. So, uh, and the, the screen to the is right is actually a life-size HD video screen. So as we were thinking about having uh, guest speakers to come into the classroom, we thought, well, it would be nice to have them in a full uh, array, but also have them to be able to present information. And then if there's a faculty member in the class and they need to interact, they can interact with the Mondo pad as well. So we were all about the interactiveness of the room itself. So obviously this is where the chalkboards used to be, as you can see. But there was more to it. There's the camera that's displaying across the top, which is actually going to show the classroom. So if there's a guest speaker, the guest speaker can see the audience. And uh, more importantly, in the back of the room, there is a camera pointing towards the front. And I'll show that in a minute, but one of the key things that, that, that I think is this fact that on this screen you have the face of an outside presenter as if someone's standing in the front of the classroom. We like this. And then we give them control of this board and everybody's sitting there, nobody's standing there touching the board. They have, they're using a piece of software called Control View and they, they're doing their presentation completely remote. So we have this outside presenter really presenting in the room while everybody else just sits there. And it seems at that moment when we did, and we'll talk a little bit about our orientations, that was the point where they went, ooh, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, so. so then, um, and just a little bit about the other equipment back there. So go ahead in the back of the room. Well, uh, you can notice there's, there's two screens back there. So the idea here was to duplicate what's on the front because we had heard from our faculty when I'm talking to the class, I've got to turn around either to the board or to the screen or to the computer or whatever, and my face is turned away. So we were thinking, well, if you can look out across the audience and then you can see right above their heads what it is that is behind you, you can continue your conversation and keep eye contact. So it seemed like there was a, a need to, to engage the, the, uh, the room. Plus, we were thinking about other instances where uh, people in remote locations might be dialed in. So uh, the, whether it's the guest presenter and you're looking at the guest presenter as the faculty person up front and you're also looking at the students in front of you or if you've got a remote classroom and there are students there and you're teaching them as well so you can see their faces and the faces of those who are in front of you. So it, it brought a whole new dynamic for us in terms of, of interaction and the faculty member being able to see the audience in, in all aspects. 
And then, of course, we just put power along the back seats so that for the folks who brought their laptops or their um, iPads or whatever, if they didn't get a full charge, they could actually, you know, plug in or whatever. So, uh, anyway, so this begins to, to look at the time frames that we were uh, against. And you can see it's a fairly short <laughs> process that we went through. Uh, and, and the biggest uh, situation there was furniture. As you know, if you're dealing with furniture at all, that's got the longest lead time. Obviously, technology can have lead times, but typically it's, it's much faster. And, and I, I thought it was interesting, the, the conversations that have been taking place about com uh, the, the different furniture in terms of movable furniture and that sort of thing. Obviously, this room is an auditorium style, and it's fixed seating. But again, one of the things that we looked at this was an opportunity. This was a room that was unused, so we didn't feel like we were trying to take someone else's territory mm -hmm. and try to do something with the classroom because what we would hear is, well, you're taking my class, and I want to be able to say that we're going to do it this way, and you, you've got to remember to put this piece back in when you start. But we wanted a fresh start and something completely different. So we didn't really get a lot of input from folks except to hear what it is that they wanted to do. So. It allowed us in this short time frame to pull something together. I think generally, um, you all probably see this too, there are, there are driving moments where a lot of things seem to be happening around a certain time frame. Then it slows down for a little bit while you try to put the pieces of the puzzle together and then there's that next big driving mm -hmm. moment. And, and it's, it's insanity mm -hmm. during those big <laughs> driving moments. And that's what we've been going through. That's what we have been feeling for the last uh, couple of months while all these things have been um, going on. But to me, I think it's amazing that um, the crew has pulled off getting the furniture and getting something in there to get the whole thing started. And so what we want to know is, when you build it, <laughs> will they come? So, so what have you all found? You know, when you when you start putting these things together, is it like when you get that treadmill in your house? <laughs> is it like that? Is that what happens? You get all of that at the beginning, and then all of a sudden it's sitting there. Or t share with us. We want to know what you know. What what are we about to experience? Does it last? Is it, is it just factions that take off? Please share with us. We want to know. Modifications are soon to follow, or requests are soon to follow. Right. And we're seeing that right away because there are faculty who want to go in there and they have certain pieces of software that they want, and we have to be ready to uh, adjust. Yes. It's, a, it's constant, though, right? I mean, yeah, it's exactly. just every time somebody else goes in there, it's a new need, right? Right. Each faculty has different uh, ideas of the space, and so your idea is totally different from theirs. So once you put this technology in there, they might turn around and say, well, it would be really cool if we had this. And then ideally the next faculty comes in, because this is kind of like a, it's like a classroom for the whole campus. It'd be cool if we had this. And it evolves into a totally different thing, an idea towards what you had envisioned beforehand. And what I want to know is how long does it take till you can determine that it really is successful? I think at least a year. I mean, we've, we've got, uh, anything shiny and new people are drawn to it. We've got one room where we tried to throw everything into it. Uh, High-end polycom video conferencing system, lecture capture, high-definition projector, Blu-ray. Uh, it's a Mac lab and it's a general classroom and, and people love it at first and then, as Greg said, modifications come and requests come and um, I don't know when it's going to wear off. It's not that old, so I don't know when the, the newness is going to wear off for people, but I wouldn't plan on doing a second one like it until we have at least a year under our belt and really figure out what they want for sure and, and do they use it as frequently as they said they would and so forth. In light of the lunch kicking in, will you all stand, those of you who have HD video conferencing in, in your on your campus now so you can just get a sense of good? You know, because one of the things, wow, okay, cool. One of the things that we're sort of interested in, in doing is, is doing some test connections with you all for, you know, hoping some of the things that Amanda <coughs> might coordinate with us, you know, with time, because, you know, we're, we're the baby, you know, we're the new baby on the block, and so we need you, we want you, <laughs> we, you know, need your help. You want to talk about the orientation? Uh, I'll let you talk about the first one, but I did want to mention the fact that while we 
intended for this to be a, a, a faculty space, an academic space, and it's an academic room, we have gotten all kinds of folks from across campus hitting us up for this. I mean, administrators, we've got, we've got interviews taking place for potential candidates, uh, faculty as well as uh, administrators or staff persons and, and that sort of thing. And we've had student organizations come in. Our SGA saw it and they were like, we need two of those. So, you know, we're thinking, okay, where's the money? So <laughs> we're asking for funding. So uh, anyway, it just was a showcase to, to bring people out of the woodwork. I mean, it's like everybody's now interested in this and, and we've, we're, we're excited about the success uh, of it so far because just of the excitement that it generates. And I guess Jan's questions go back to that, how long is this going to last and how, how long do we have to stave this off before we can get back to our real job? Because right now, it's taking a huge amount of resources from my staff to be able to take care of this. And we knew that going in and we shared with the president saying, we've got to have additional funding for staff to take care of this. And we're continuing to, to press that. And I'm going to hear, I'm going to go back from this meeting to, to share that I'm hearing the same thing from everyone else. Uh, so I'll, I'll have some reinforcements there. But uh, you want to share about the fact? I think one thing that is unique in what you guys did is that you had an unused room. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have any other pressures on it. Um, I certainly can't say the same about our rooms, that we converted rooms that were already active classrooms. And that that has hurt our ability to market it in as many ways as you all seem to be marketing it because first and foremost it's a classroom and it's, it's those regularly scheduled classes are gonna take place in there so you can't have it at two in the afternoon for an interview because there's a classroom. Right, right. Yeah, I would not say that I'm seeing that our rooms are not being used for the video conferencing piece. They're being used for all the other cool technology in the room but not video conferencing. And also, we can't get into the room to do video conferencing yeah. if we want to, so that's the other problem. We had a group study room near the media center that we uh, revamped to be just used for Skype interviews because there was such a need for faculty doing candidate interviews. But we find that that's the room we, it seats about eight to 10, and it has a table shape so the camera can be. And isn't what you're talking about the video interview? I mean, am I talking about the same mm -hmm. thing? Mm -hmm. So um, we use it for webinars, and um, you know, we it's uh, it, we have a lot more control over it. It stays locked. We're trying to you know kind of keep it as a just for that. Not we don't want people to come in and just watch a movie on that screen or whatever. And there's a need for that. There's actually a need for more of those, smaller as opposed to an auditorium. I don't know that at our school we have had faculty that would ask for that kind of teaching where you take over the screen, like that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, but I might be wrong. Another, another thing that, that I'm interested in and is, I mean, we all have the projector screen computer model in all of our classrooms, but I'm looking to see if that's possible to replace uh, that with a Mondo pad because now it becomes interactive and it's the computer there already and it's also HD quality and then it just gives us whole new you know possibilities there. How much was the Mondo pad? Uh, very expensive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we went with a 70 inch because it, it was you know 70 some seats there in the room for yeah. that particular setting because I think I've heard our president has said something like if you do, if you set it up for a big room, you can always have a smaller audience in it. But if you set it up in a small room, you can't always bring a bigger audience into it. Which is, you know, if you're going to put this kind of money into a room, try to make it as versatile as you can. Mm -hmm. So how much did you pay for it? Yeah, that, that was about a ten thousand dollar item just for the Mondo pad itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had obviously other expenses in the room, furniture and yeah, so yeah, forth. Yeah. So and other technology with the. Um, uh, and the other piece that you can't see in those pictures is the lecture capture idea. In other words, and that was what I mentioned earlier, uh, having uh, utilized the uh, UVC um, software that comes with the life size unit. So we're, and I heard someone saying earlier about uh, some of your faculty are interested in making sure that videos that they may create not be out on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So we were thinking along that same line, so we've got our own quote-unquote BSC YouTube page for those people who want to keep things sort of separate. Mm -hmm.
but if you don't mind to put it out on YouTube, you're more than welcome to do that. So uh, that was sort of the component that goes along with it, the server and the background technology that goes with it. Uh, and the, one of the interesting conversations that we've had even in the department is, you know, let's go back to the first slide with the chalkboard. Um, you know, remember when we took when we took one of those away or, or we added to that and we added a computer and a projection in the classroom and what that change was like, remember that? Now, faculty don't think about that at all for the most part. They just go in and, you know, give me the on buttons and they go. And so we wonder, you know, this is new for us. How, what's the time frame, do you think? How long do you think it'll take till something like this in a classroom and the ability to do a video conferences is commonplace as making a phone call. How long will that take for us to evolve our faculty into that? Because you all said earlier, you know, we are bringing faculty in now, the newer faculty in with all sorts of skills and that 40 year gap, you know, that we're you know, dealing with. How, how long might this take? How, what, what's the longest that some of you have had this at your institution? Some, anybody over two years? The web conferencing? Just the just the use video conferencing, yeah. yeah. We have one of them. Is, is it is ha, has the use of it and the commonplace of it mm -hmm. become, or do you still have to well, do we, a lot we, of you know, Our model is a little different. I mean, we don't really expect our faculty to come in and master teleconferencing technology. So yeah. what we'll do is boot camp student workers every semester, and they're the facilitators. So they cool. sit in the class. Cool. They basically are stage managing. The connections, they've got all the back channel communications and the event things go wrong, mm -hmm. and, and they're directing it. And so what we try to do is get the faculty member used to teaching in the space and, and talk about best practices and encourage them to get in the room early so that they can see students on the other end file in and start creating the relationships. Mm -hmm. So there's some, some people and space dynamics with this as mm -hmm. well as, as the technology, but from our perspective, it, it's kind of a a losing proposition to try to bootstrap your faculty to make them go into this because it's hard enough to get in here and be effective in the space. You want them to focus on the, the audience in front of them and that remote audience, keeping them involved. And it's a it's kind of an acquired skill and takes some practice, but it's not insurmountable. It's a lot easier to have them just focus on that rather than okay, I'm local camera, remote camera. Uh, look at the confidence monitor. Look at the look at the right. camera. There's just so much going on for them to be effective in the space. So you just want to simplify that for them as much as possible. The other thing, you know, if you're talking about the the uh, um, uh, equipment, you know, you buy and you hang your clothes on your bedroom, you know, because you're never going to walk in, on your treadmill. We kind of had that with our original video conference room because it was in this kind of Taj Mahal space. Now it's our video conference room. It was a one-off control system. Nobody knew how to use it. So as a result, you, I literally went in there one time, and somebody had left clothes and crap just in there. And I'm thinking, <laughs> here's eighty to hundred thousand dollars worth of codecs, teleconferencing equipment, cameras, and we're using it as a storeroom. Mm -hmm. And so that was for us kind of the aha moment that we've got to get this out of the specialized, set-apart places, put it into the classrooms, put it where faculty are teaching. Because to your point before about you know, faculty not wanting to do things. One of the things we found out when we did our first kind of paired thing a couple of falls ago, I guess, was faculty looked at the typical t conference room setup of these things thinking, I can't see myself teaching here because I stand up and it cuts my head off. So it's like, okay, fine. Then we set it up to be classroom. So I guess the thing is you're going to have different use case sizes for these types of things. So we've got a video conference room for that interview type of thing. We've got an auditorium very much like you have for the 75 to 100 level type of class. And then we have a typical classroom with it. So, you know, your, your mileage is going to vary, but, you know, you just need to look and see what you're going to be doing with it and what your expectation is. And, and a lot of really great insights. And, and so basically the idea of it um, being as seamless as what a normal classroom, uh, 10 years out? I mean, do you, do you think it'll yeah. happen, really? Uh, well, we're going to try this semester. We, uh, David, and, David and I have a class where the faculty member is here at Rollins, and they teach the Hendricks students. Mm -hmm. And last spring was the first time he taught that, and we had a person in there all the time. And basically, the faculty member demanded it. He was just like, no, there's no way I could do it myself. 
So through that experience, we set up presets on the Crestron controller because we know that the faculty actually, as he teaches, is sort of in one of three positions. And so we've set up presets. And so now when the person goes in there and is sitting in there, really all they're doing is hitting the preset buttons, right? And it automatically goes. So the faculty member doesn't know this, but this coming semester, we're <laughs> going to begin the process of sort of saying to him, you see these little preset buttons? You can do this yourself, you know? And we're gonna, we're gonna work towards weaning so that, yeah, we'll come in and turn the call on and make sure that the call gets set up and all of that, but over time, we would like to see if we can get him to control the presets on his own. And it might take all semester before we can actually walk out of the room. But if, in fact, we can do that, then, then we don't have to do it again, right? Then the next time we do it, we can start the call, and then we can leave, and he can handle the presets. So I, I think there is a, there is a chance because I am old enough to remember when um, we set, when I was a faculty member and said, there's no way I'm ever gonna be able to hook a laptop up to a projector and by myself. I'm always going to need technology to help me do that. And, and now that's ridiculous. So I think we can get there, but it's gonna take a little time. Uh, the other thing is, um, we, we, we uh, bring the, we do, do the type of uh, connections in the classroom itself. And the other part of that is the students themselves. Mm -hmm. They're already in the classroom from that particular beginning of the semester, and that's their space. Mm -hmm. And they really like being in the same room where they have their class. They mm -hmm. really don't like having to go someplace else mm -hmm. or maybe at a different time. So once they get over that initial bit that it's not, you know, that there's not a living room type of thing, they, they don't even see it anymore. It's just transparent and so on. And the other thing you were talking about, chalkboard and so on, down the line, hopefully less than 10 years. And I think the interesting thing is keeping an eye on that flexible technology that is now, I was looking at the, I mean, the willow glass, the ability to have the flexible type surfaces and so on. And maybe that might replace chalkboards. Did you want to say anything more about, I mean, I, I know they can all, um, did you want to say anything more about the live streaming part of that, or just uh, like, that we're going to attempt that? As, because we tried to make the room, you know, be one of those settings where we have a guest speaker come in, or we have a guest class, you know, so it can it can be, you know, either way, and, and like Anthony said, we've got people We've got people imagining using it for, mm, yeah. for all sorts of things now, which is, you know, it's exciting. And yet, we do have dreams of it. <laughs> Seamless assistance. This was the, this was the slide. The we to bring we had to all have the that chuckles. Idea. We wanted to bring the chuckles. I don't have to keep it's dreaming, insane. right? Things, things will evolve with time, hopefully. But... Um, well, so the live streaming obviously goes back to the flipped classroom idea that many of you have spoken about. If we have recorded the information, we need to be able to stream it out to them, and that was one of the functionalities that is available to us. So with the, the back-end server that we're getting set up, as a matter of fact, we only got the server like three weeks ago, so we don't even have it functioning at this point. But we've had the room operational since late August, and we've already used it uh, countless times, probably 20, 25 times already, and it's not even officially open yet. It's not even it's officially supposed to be open for faculty use until, uh, I guess it is uh, January or the, the winter. Well, faculty term. have already started to use it. They've already brought in two, two or three people have already brought in guest lectures who are controlling the Mondo pad, you know, with their class and talking about some sort of specialty item um, with their classes. And I mean, what you brought up is true. I mean, we know, we know that we'll have to evolve with this as it, as it evolves. Um, two, it's just, you know, t t tell us what kind of evolutions, you know, that you've had. And this, for us, this was a lot about trying to gain some experiences, and thank you for building in the time for all these separate conversations. So please, um, you know, approach us so that we can, you know, 
let us do some tests with you at your place and you know even if it's us doing IT things with each other and you know show me some of the storyboarding you know and you know those kind of things. Has anybody played with the Crestron I think it's called the Air Media? My, have you done that job? I've seen the demo and, and we're considering buying one for uh, one of our experimental rooms. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, my uh, my Crestron programmer, I walked past his office the other day and he said to me, do you want to see the future? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him and said, sure, you know, and he said, come into my lab, right? And uh, he's got a little room with his servers in it and he actually had it set up using this that um, uh, his iPad could be projected uh, Onto, onto the screen. So he could basically be any, we could have somebody anywhere in the world um, and they could be, they could turn on with, the, with this app, they could turn on the projection system in the room and then uh, transmit their content to that projector, to, to that screen in the room through the projector, through the Crestron system just through this little air media tool, which is not expensive. Do you remember how much it is? It was $2,000. Yeah. And you could, pro you could project from your Android phone. Yeah, he was doing it from his iPhone yeah. or his iPad he was doing it from. But, but literally, you could imagine a faculty member who is, you know, I was thinking about your faculty member who was at the Democratic National yeah. Convention or something, yeah. right? Overseas. And, or overseas yeah. and could just and literally, he could turn on the projection system in his classroom, so his students could come into their own room, the room they're used to, right, walk in there, and then the faculty member could turn the system on remotely and start projecting remotely from, uh, from, their, own, from their stuff, wherever they are. So that was a, you know, a pretty amazing kind of technology to see. Yeah, one of the things we found with the Mondo pad is the collaborative nature in terms of you can use an iPad to take control of the Mondo pad. You can write on the Mondo pad, or if you're save share. Yeah, uh, if you're in another location, as long as you have a Wi-Fi capability, you know you can see what's on the Mondo pad. If you're not, if you're in the back of the room and you can't see what's up there, you can have it on your iPad and, and, and view it and that sort of thing. So, uh, the the wireless technology and the control capability is just phenomenal when we were looking at this. The other cool thing is. Uh, the Mondo pad itself, we refer to it as it's an entity because you can email things to the Mondo pad and it'll email you back. It says, okay, <laughs> I got your message and oh, oh by the way, the things you sent me, here's a code that you'll need to use to when you go to the Mondo pad itself so that you can unlock and because that way you yeah. can email things to the device yeah. and it's, it's kept it's on, separate. It's on my documents and you open it up and your oh. email's there with your attachment. And but it does it tweet? Used. There was somebody back there who was going to say something. When we saw the Air Media demo, though, the big caveat was that it would not project everything off of the iPad. It would only project specific file types. Yeah. Now. Uh, I don't Did you notice that? Because, no, I, I, mean, I didn't. It, it, that, that was a big deal. Well, the Mondo pad yeah, has that too, because if you send it an unsupported mm -hmm. file type, it emails you back that yeah. these are the supported what, file types. What, what professors at Furman want is their iPad projected up there yeah. on Tether, yeah. not the blocking. They, they want to see the apps. So, yeah. for example, Michael's in music, so he may demonstrate a specific music app. But I think the Air Media wouldn't show the desktop of the iPad, yeah. it would just show. Documents that you were it's presenting. only PowerPoint, Word, Excel, PDF, and JPEG. Mm -hmm. uh, so still in the gist. Although they mentioned 15 frames per second, but it's it's only yeah, they took a video still in the gist. If you do embed video into your PowerPoint, then it doesn't play as smooth. Like oh, is that right? Yeah, well, we found that to be the case uh, with the Mondo Pad. You you have to uh, it has to be local first off, and again, if you've only got 15 frames per second, obviously a video is going to be choppy at that yeah. rate. So you have, and that's where we were able to uh, allow the person from off campus to email the information or or to just link to it and actually run it real time from YouTube or wherever, as opposed to running it through the Mondo Pad. Yeah. So there's ways around that. How are you guys using the Mondo Pad? Well, we just got it. Um, Kind of in the fall too, so and it's in a smaller room that was 
not a group study room, but a little conference room. It holds about 15 people, and we've been using it for kind of for video conferencing and kind of connecting. And we've actually, um, it wasn't that's a room that's not been scheduled for classes, so we prioritized it so that it can't just be scheduled for somebody who wants to come in that room. So video conferencing gets first priority. And we're actually we're doing a collaboration um, with Yale. There's some. We have an alum who um, actually is working at Yale now, Linda Mays, and she's doing a lot of work with some Swanee faculty in the psychology department. So next semester, we're going to use that room to connect kind of with the faculty members at Yale who are teaching a course, and the students will, the Swanee students, there will be four or five of them, will actually be in that room. I have a question about security. Do, do you all leave these rooms open? Hmm. How many of you leave the rooms open? to walk in, walk out, however you want? Uh, well, the video conference room um, is locked, but our classrooms are classrooms, so people are in and out of them all the time. The so they have, we have cabinets for our Crestron and PC and, and our Codex, so they're locked, but the classrooms themselves are open. Yeah, our, our faculty have a key to the AV cabinet, then they just leave everything locked, so we stop doing that. Yeah, actually, we don't so lock. Open. We don't have our video cabinets locked. The classrooms are open until probably 10 o'clock at night, and then uh, security will, will go around and sort of lock buildings, and sometimes they'll lock rooms, but most of the time they lock buildings, not rooms. And for our Mondo pad, we actually keep the keyboard and the mouse. You have to check that out, mm -hmm. so you can't really do much without that. Is it Bluetooth with it? Is it Bluetooth with it? Yeah, yeah it's a... Can you, is that what you're asking? Can you use a Bluetooth? Yeah, can you use a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse on it? Uh, let's see. I'm, the, I'm assuming that it is a Bluetooth connection. It, it's definitely wireless, but I'm not sure exactly. Oh, okay. Um, okay. You know, yeah, that's, it's, it's in a little thing. It's, it's wireless, but we don't need that. So anybody could use their Bluetooth. Yeah, but you don't have to have the keyboard and mouse to operate. It's all touch stuff. Yeah, honestly, we, we don't tell. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 I'm 